The following program is sponsored by Open Way Church in Cyprus. This is Walking Closely with God, a prayer ministry broadcast outreach of Open Way Church located in Bridgeland, Cyprus, Texas. Please stay tuned as Pastor Greg brings you biblical teaching from the Word of God, giving you clear understanding to help guide and empower you in your close walk with God. At the same time, teaches you to pray effectual prayers that bring answers and solutions to stubborn issues of life. The power of the Word is unveiled. As you stand on it by faith, you then start experiencing manifestations of the promises that enhances a purpose-driven life in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome to Walking Closely with God. The title for this message is The Wisdom of the Just. The Wisdom of the Just. Before we go into the message, let's say a short word of prayer. Father, I thank you. I bless you today as we come again to sit at your feet, Jesus, to be fed, nourished with the bread of life. I pray, O oh Lord God, our hearts will be open to hear you and our ears will be attentive to listen. And as the word come forth, Father, let it bless us. Speak by your spirit through me. As I open my mouth, let my tongue become the pen of your ready writing to write upon the hearts of your children, your indelible word, your word that never fails, your word that is life and powerful in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. The Bible reading is taken from 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, and then verse 6. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. Verse 6, Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him his son to sit on his throne this very day. The backdrop of this prayer is Solomon offering a thousand burnt offerings unto God and God visiting him that night and giving him a blank check. But right off the bat, from what we just read, the Bible said Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes in the statutes that he was taught of his father, David. This is relationship, and this is all God is asking from every one of his child, a father-child relationship. We see David teaching Solomon the ways of God. We also need the wisdom of the just. Some version says the wisdom of the righteous as individuals. But most especially as parents, to teach our children the ways of God, to fear God, to love God, to obey God, to be passionate about the things of God, especially the word of God. Teach them, yielding to serving God with their lives and their substance. Teach them to give in to God as an act of thanksgiving and gratitude. Unfortunately, many today give with a motive to receive back. From God. We ought to honor God, exalt Him with praises and worship, with everything that we are. And if we truly walk in the ways of God, there's so much God wants to do in our lives. Amen. God wants to do so much for you, reveal secret things to you that will make you a pain of sign and wonder in the land. God wants to give you power to get wealth. God wants to give you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and the power of the enemy. God wants to brag and boast about you as he did in Job. And that is why Luke chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 amplifies says, He will turn many of the sons of Israel back from sin to love and serve the Lord their God. And he will go forth before him in the spirit of and in the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Amen. 
God wants us to turn our love back to him, just like he told the church in Ephesians, go back to your first love, to serve him, to have a deep and profound relationship with him. Amen. God wants to truly bless you as a child, but he requires your life becoming a living sacrifice unto him. Solomon offered a thousand bond offering, sacrifice, a thousand sacrifice of animals. And God visited him and gave him a blank check. Just now, imagine with me that according to Apostle Paul in Romans 12, 1, when he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service unto God. When we lay our lives on the altar, God will give us more than that. Abraham laid Isaac, his very best, and God gave him everything. Today, people are tapping into the blessings of Abraham because of that sacrificial giving. God had tested Abraham and knew Abraham loved him, but God took him to the very last test, the, the child that he had waited for for 25 years, God said, go offer it. Go offer that child unto me. God wants a relationship with us. You know, we all know the kings of the earth. They enjoy the best of everything that is available. But we serve a God that is the king of kings. Our God has the best. Therefore, God wants to give to his children, you, a child of God, the best of the best. And God wants the best from you. So you have to go through a season of process of refining to make you the best version of yourself. And so he tells us in Isaiah 48 verse 10, Isaiah 48 verse 10, he said, Indeed, I have refined you, but not as a silver I have tested and chosen you in the fullness of affliction. God wants to take you through a process of refining to remove impurities, filth, to make you purer and better, to make you the best version of yourself. Amen. And this is where most people fail. Nobody wants to go through the process. The process comes with persecution. The process comes with battles to build up your spirit man, to teach your hands to war and your fingers to battle as the soldier, as one of the soldiers of the cross. The process comes with God isolating you, keeping you hidden in the presence of all while he's working on you to develop a deep intimacy with him like he did with David. When Samuel came to anoint a king, he went through all the brothers and the Lord said, the king is not here. Samuel had to ask Jesse, are these all of your children? So David was kept hidden even in the presence of his family. So they had to send for David. That is what God wants to do when the time comes for you. They will send for you like they sent for Joseph from the prison. Like they sent for David, they will send for you when you've gone through the process. When the time is right. When God knows that, yes, I can boast about you, brag about you. The nobles will send for you. Kings will send for you. Leaders of nations will send for you. Leaders of industries will send for you. People that are connected will send for you. People that are influential will send for you. Why? Because God has deposited in you that which is valuable. Amen? The process comes with God holding some things back from you and equally holding you back from some things to test your faith so that you can become perfect and one thing, nothing. So 1 Peter 5.10 Amplified tells us, he said, after you have suffered a while, the God of all grace who impacts his blessings and favor 
who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, settle you, making you what you ought to be, the best version of you, what you ought to be, the best that men will seek for, what you ought to be, a child that will be a phenomenon to his or her generation, what you ought to be, one that God can boast and brag about. Amen? Because at the end of the process, the God of all grace will make you so valuable that people will fall over themselves to want to favor and to be good to you. You will become a spectacle to your generation. You will become sought after. Just like this generation wants the best value for money, you will become a global phenomenon. They will come from the ends of the earth to seek for you, to benefit of what you have, the great value that you carry. So 2 Chronicles 9.23 tells us, all the kings of the earth sought an audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom that God had put in him. To hear the wisdom that God has put in you, people from the four corners of the earth will seek for you. Nobles, leaders of industries, leaders of nations, kings, they will seek for you when you yield to successfully go through the process of refining and pruning. God will spotlight you for your generation because you carry value that the global village is seeking for. Financial issues will become a thing of the past because your value attracts wealth and riches globally. You don't go knocking on doors to be opened unto you. Your name alone will open doors for you. Your name will open doors unto you. Like those doors at the supermarket, when you are approaching the door, it notices you. It opens automatically before you get to the door so that your steps are not what kind of slowed down, so that your pace is not slowed down. You continue to move at the same speed, at the same pace. You were coming before you approach the door so that the door will part. That is how it will become for you. Amen? So King Sheba said to Solomon, everything I heard in my country about your achievement and wisdom is true, but I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told me. Your wisdom and your prosperity have far exceeded the reports that I heard. God will make you a thing that is sought after people. You know, your testimony will precede you. Your name will precede you. Your accomplishment will precede you. Your success will precede you. They will be your resume. They will be your reference point that people will hear and then begin to seek for you, seek audience with you. And that is why. You must seriously reevaluate your relationship with God and do everything it takes to be closer to Him. And I mean truly everything. You want to reevaluate your lifestyle choices. You want to reevaluate your schedules. You want to reevaluate everything about your life so that you can put God in His rightful place as the first. And as the last, put him as the one that everything else revolves around. Not him revolving around everything else in your life. You want to put God in a position that will cause God to do for you exceedingly, abundantly more than you can ever ask or hope for. Amen. You know, we have a lot of these, you know, preachers, teachers, you know, that, that, you know, 
10 steps to financial breakthrough and prosperity teaching, 5 steps to walking upon the high places of the earth, 10 steps to open doors. No, all God wants is a relationship and those things will come of their own accord because they are part of the package of salvation. They are part of everything God has made available to you as a child. You don't seek for what is already yours. You don't go looking for your own possession. They are in your house. They are right there with you. Amen? So it is. All the gifts packaged in salvation, all the benefits, all the good things and the great things packaged in, they are available to you. So forget all those 10 steps to break through, open doors, this. No. Reevaluate your relationship. Work on your relationship with God. Don't just be a hearer of the word, but let there be a balance by you being a doer of the word as well. Because whom much is given, much is required. There is no other way around it. There is no other way around it. There is a price to pay, true. But when you pay the price, it's like a gold that is taken through the fire to bring forth the brilliance that is hidden within the gold. When you pay the price to go through the process, God would have refined you. You become brilliant. You become shining with his glory. You become a thing of, you know, of honor. You become a person of influence. Your life now, now starts to command all that God has made available for you for life and for godliness. Amen? But it takes relationship, reevaluating and putting God in his right place in your life. Let God be first place in your life. Let God have priority over everything else in your life. Let God be the one that you go to first for everything and anything. Let God direct your path, walk in his ways. Let his word be the final, the final in your life. The word of God takes precedence in your life, in all your decision-making processes. Amen? So Luke 24, 49 tells us, he said, listen carefully. I'm sending you the promise of my Father, the Holy Spirit and all the blessings, everything that is in the kingdom. But you have to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed, fully equipped with power from on high, until you've been through the process, until you've let God do a work in you, complete a work in you. Remain, remain under the mighty hand of God that in due season, he will lift you up. Because Jesus said we can do nothing without him. We must yield. We must yield to the spirit of God to lead, to guide us in all. It might look like it's taking so much time. People have gone ahead of me. Oh, look at everyone that, you know, I know they are doing much, much better than me. They are successful in their business, in their career. But God said, lean on me, wait on me. They that wait on me will fly. They will soar on the wings of ego. Just one blessing from God will cover 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. He said, I will pour out a blessing on you that you will not have room enough to contain it. Just one, just one blessing will make up for all the lost years. Will make up for everything you thought you had lost. Just one blessing. Amen. God wants to make the best of you. Amen. But you must wait on the Lord and let him renew, refine, you know, recreate, remold, repair, you know, just restore you to him. Restore you to him. Let God do all of that. Amen. And then you mount up with wings like eagle. 
Amen. Where others are running, you will be flying. Amen. And that is where you build a name for yourself. This is where you build a name for yourself. When you let God do a work in you, God will pour into you everything that will make you valuable. God will pour into you wisdom like he gave to Solomon. God will pour into you that which the world out there, your generation is looking for. They are thirsty for. They are hungry for. God will pour it in you, put it in you, so that you now can be a stream that is flowing into your generation, a stream that is life, life that they need into your generation. For out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of you shall flow life that will minister to people. And by so doing, God will make a name for himself in your life, through your life, and with your life. Amen? Because a name is better than prosperity, quick wealth. A name will either open doors or shut doors for your children in future. So remember everything you do, your children, your children, every decision you make, put your children at the back of your mind, making those decisions. Because your name will either open or shut doors for your, for your children in future. Amen? You under the sound of my voice. You are listening to me. You are still, you know, one day you are with the world. The other day you are with God. You know, make up your mind. Come to God. Live for God. Reevaluate your relationship and let God do a work within you. But you that don't have a relationship with God, I want to invite you to an authentic one-on-one -on -one relationship. Please repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life. I confess of my sins. I repent. Forgive me. Write my name in your book of life. That is from today. Sit at the throne of my heart as my Lord and over my life as my Savior. In Jesus' name. You that have made that decision, welcome to the kingdom of God. The next thing you want to do, get yourself a Bible, join a Bible-believing church where they will disciple you to become a soldier of the cross. As for us, Open Way Church, we are virtual. But you can check us out on YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Open Way Church, Bridgeland is the Facebook page. And Open Way Church is our YouTube channel. Check us out. Amen. Every Monday, every Wednesday, we have bedtime prayer at 8 p.m. to about 8.45, where we pray apostolic prayer. Do well, join us, because Jesus said men ought to pray and faint not. Pray without season. We are in a, we are in a time now where we need to be praying. Amen? Join us. Amen? Join us for prayers. And if this message has blessed you, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that every time we come on live, you'll be notified. Amen. God loves you. God wants to do so much for you. God wants to make a name for himself through your life, but you need to become, by his mercies, a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy acceptable, which is your very, what? Reasonable service unto him. Amen. We love you. Jesus loves you more. I'll be with you again next week. But until then, may the Lord keep you, preserve you, and continue to shine his light upon your life so that you will be a beacon to your generation. In Jesus' name, shalom. Bye. Thank you for listening. This program is made possible by support of listeners like you. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner or making a one-time donation? Your support helps us continue providing these teachings to minister, encourage, and bless the body of Christ across the landscape of this great nation and nations all over the world. To donate or to learn more, please visit www.openwaychurch.com. You can also join us for Bedtime Prayer Fellowship every Monday and Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. through 8.45 p.m., streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. www.facebook.com slash openweightchurchbridgeland or www.youtube.com 
slash openweightchurch. Our prayer for you is that your faith grows stronger and your walk with God grows deeper because there's victory in Jesus Christ.